Hi, my love. TB test fee was 1,200 Ghana CDs. Please, you have to take extra money with you. The queue was crazy. Apply for my visa. You see that trouser? Wear everything. Ghana is for it, okay? The hit that will catch you before you get to the airport. I was just sad I'm going to leave Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, you can tell you you are not allowed to come. come back. Ghana for everything about my relocation was forward. Life after I got to the United Kingdom. UK is very expensive. I'm not going to lie. When I said she get it from her mama, mama said you fuck her right. Body book is fun, but like, tell me in the home of life. Tell me, is you down? Cause I'm trying to go. Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Emla Ando. I'm a Ghanaian YouTuber based in the United Kingdom. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell after subscribing so you don't miss out a video. And to my returning subscribers, I love you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you for the shares, the like, the comment. I'm so grateful for your love. God bless you all. You guys are the real cheese and I love you guys. So today's vlog is going to be a bit different from my lifestyle and cooking content. In this vlog, I'm going to talk about my pre and my post relocation life. I'll be talking about my process, how I got to the United Kingdom, and how life has been after relocating to the United Kingdom. So in my travel preparation vlog, I spoke about my process, how I applied, my biometrics, my medicals, and everything, but it wasn't well detailed. And I realized people were commenting about not seeing the writings and all that. I've read all your comments. And I also had a lot of questions from people regarding my relocation. So this video is going to be interactive, educative, and detailed i'm coming to talk about my relocation and explain everything well for you guys if you are looking forward to relocate or you're about starting the whole relocation process and journey then this video is for you get your book your pen and your snack and let's get into the video I have this sheet with me so if you see me reading from this sheet please pardon me I have pinpointed few things I don't want to forget because I want this video to be detailed and interactive let's start with the prayer relocation I'm going to talk about my process I came with a permanent resident here so I started on 25th December. On 24th December 2023, I booked an appointment for my medicals. So on 25th December 2023, I went to do my medicals for my online visa application. I'm going to state the documents needed for the medicals. So you need your passport. Your passport, don't forget that and a photocopy of any identification card it could be your Ghana card voters id card any card that makes you a Ghanaian. uk address is also needed so you have to provide an address of where you'll be staying when you finally relocate to the united kingdom and also you have to provide your ghana address where you live in ghana tb test fee was 1200 ghana cities as at that time when i did mine so guys please you have to take extra money with you maybe go with 1500 ghana cities 
or 2000 so if they have increased it you wouldn't find yourself wanting or stranded but if it's still 1200 cities then you pay that's it okay so don't forget to go with extra money and uk test is only tb test you don't have to do yellow fever or hiv or all those tests no you are going to do tuberculosis test that's for uk um, medicals i don't know about other countries i know of canada you go through that long process tb yellow fever and all that by uk is tb test that's all and it was 1200 ghana cds when i went to do mine location for the medicals so the location is at number 22 odoi power street guys pardon me this is a gun word and i can't speak ga so this pronunciation is going to be bad please forgive me so it is number 22 odoi power street around airport residential area accra so you have to get into your church or taxi whatever from any part of accra then when you get to airport runabout you are light you can pick a boat from there to this location it's quite easy it's not far from the airport runabout so guys that's it and then the name of the place is iom migration health assessment center please jot it down okay i'm begging you in the name of god please go early hey go early because the number of people that want to jackpot <laughs> everybody wants to jackpot so if you don't go early you're going to meet a huge number of people over there waiting for you so if you're like me that you don't want stress my sister go early please uh, i got there around 5 30 a.m and the queue was crazy so please go early at least 5 a.m you are there it is better you go early and come back early I went there around uh, 5 30 a.m. and I came back around 2 to 3 p.m. That's not the normal time I was supposed to come back. They made a mistake with my certificate. So, guys, after your TB test, they will give you a certificate. So, you need to keep that certificate because you will use it for applying your visa and also you might need it when you get to the UK airport so they made a mistake with my certificate so I had to wait for like three four three to four hours yeah before they finalized and did everything perfect for me so guys they will give you that chance to go through your certificate please take your time and read it well because they make mistakes so take your time read everything well Go to them, let them correct the mistakes before you take it back home. Don't rush. So on that same day, 25th December, after my medicals, I went to do my police statement. I was like, let me do it. Why should I go home and waste time and go the next day? Let me just quickly pick Trotro and go to Nima to do my police statement. Documents needed for the police statement. You need your passport, that's your travel passport, two passport pictures. It should be red background picture. And the fee was 112 Ghana CDs. So guys, as at that time, it was 112 Ghana CDs. Please go with maybe 150 or 200 Ghana CDs, should in case they've increased it. I have no idea about the fee now and sorry i didn't research about it i have nobody to ask so please do well to go with extra money should in case they've increased it you wouldn't find yourself wanting or stranded and you will have to fill a form so on that form you have to fill your name your date of birth um the work you do 
uh, what you do your occupation whether you are a student um a nurse a lab technologies whatever that you do you have to provide it there and also you have to state your education background from junior high school to senior high school nursery university tertiary teachers training whatever you have to state it there and the location is at nima please station accra ghana so you can also pick a trotro from circle tema wherever then you are light at nima police station junction when you get down please ask any good person please ask any good person to show you where the nima police station is it's quite easy for you to find the police station just go there when you go there you just ask anybody around that you are here to do your police statements they will take you to where you have to do it then that's so all you have to wait for like weeks or i waited for four days because uh i knew somebody there and the person helped me out i don't want to mention the person's name but thank you so much for what you did for me i really appreciate it god bless you so mine came within was it three days or four days i don't really remember but i think it was three days okay so after my plea statement after the process everything i went back home to resume work and everything my normal life routine i was waiting for my plea statement to be ready so it came within three days i think yeah three days yeah so when my plea statement came and uh, now my plea statement is ready my medicals is ready i had to go straight to the point to apply for my visa so the visa was online guys to be honest with you i have no idea about this visa application big baby took care of that he took care of the visa application everything and i was busy with work at that time and i was preparing for my graduation too and he was in the united kingdom already so i had no idea about how he went by it and uh, he has been a little bit busy i couldn't ask him well so i'll give you this information so maybe i'll do another detailed video about it but guys if you want to know more about um this online visa how to travel how to apply visa on your own i'll put my brother youtube channel here so you guys all can go to his channel to check it out he has been educating uh, people on how to apply schools he is in canada so he will teach you guys how to do it okay he has more knowledge about it he, i'll put his youtube channel here on the screen so you guys can go check it out okay but maybe i'll do a detailed video about how the visa application is and teach you guys so i did my online visa application on the 29th december 2023 big baby did everything we didn't go for any agents that thing guys i want to use this opportunity to tell you that stop involving agent people stop involving them in your relocation process because they are going to take extra money some of them might take extra money from you please you can do it on your own go to youtube go you will see videos on how to apply visa everything please it's better you do it yourself and save money after my online visa application which was on the 29th december 2023 i booked an appointment for my biometrics so with uk you have to book an appointment after your online visa application for biometrics documents needed you need your passport that is the main thing you have to pick first your passport your visa application form so when you finish the visa online visa application just go to a nearby cafe or any shop to print it out okay so your passport your visa application form the fee is 1250 ghana cities 
please you can go with 1500 cities or 2000 ghana cities because it was 1250 ghana cities as at that time when i went to do mine remember your full name and date of birth guys i want to state this here because someone commented on my travel preparation vlog and also someone sent me a message on whatsapp asking about interview how my interview went and all that please with uk you don't go for any interview there is no interview all you have to do is apply online apply your visa online and they will give you date to book an appointment for your biometrics where you have to you just have to go with a document the document i stated or mentioned earlier on your passport your visa application form the one i told you to print it out your money for the fee and also you have to remember your full name and date of birth the only thing they are going to ask you is your full name and date of birth after that that is it you just leave your passport with them and come home be depending on the type of visa you want they will give you or they will state the number of days you will hear from them so it could be 15 working days one month two months three months mine was 15 working days so i think they will investigate themselves that is why they ask for your address where you'll be living the person you're going to stay with what you're going to do if it is school they want to know the school you applied for and all that i think they will investigate location for biometrics so tls office inside golden tulip hotel accra so pick a trotro taxi boat wherever and go to golden tulip hotel it is opposite the national theater yes so when you get there you just ask the security please i'm looking for tls office they will show you so when you get there you go and meet a huge number of queue waiting for you just join the queue small 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 you get there you just tell them your date of birth you pay the money your full name and you leave your passport with them come home and pray so i was asked to wait for 15 working days for the confirmation email on whether it is going to be approved or denied so on 19th january 2024 uh, i got an email from them to pick up my passport on that email they didn't state whether my visa was approved or denied but i think they said when your visa is approved sometimes they won't state it they will just send you that confirmation email to go pick up your passport so when you see something like that don't get scared i was a little bit scared i thought maybe my visa is going to deny but my friend Ekia, Ekia, hello thank you so much for always encouraging me mabel kept encouraging me that ella your visa is approved don't worry and big baby was also telling me to calm down the thing is approved don't worry so that 19th um january was a uh, friday so after work i saw that email and i couldn't go so the next day was saturday and my passport was with this delivery company dhl i think they don't deliver passports on saturdays so i couldn't go on saturday but that saturday 20th of january 2023 i got that confirmation email that my visa has been approved guys oh i missed that day like i was like 
guy and all of a sudden i was so happy to the extent i didn't know if i was ready to go and like, should you wait small i was i don't know i didn't know what to do i was so happy i was preparing to go for my graduation that follow you week and look that graduation spirit left me i wasn't even ready for graduation guy i was i was ready for jackpot what is graduation you guys should pardon me so that was how happy i was i was very happy so i got that confirmation email on the 20th of january that my visa has been approved so darling go pick it up so that saturday was weekend dhl don't deliver passport on saturdays so i waited till 22nd january 2024 so i called dhl and they told me oh they're around my area so i should just come to the office and pick it up myself so i went to their office in Tema community one i was in spain test at that time so i went to their office in Tema community one to pick my passport from there i continued with my normal routine going to work preparing for graduation and preparing to relocate yeah so i also bought my plane ticket and um i wanted to come with british airway but we wanted a day big baby was going to be free from work so he can come pick me at the airport because me i haven't jacked before so you can't leave me you can't tell me to leave the airport and come home it's not possible so british airway we didn't get so we had to look for another airline that is going to be quick if you want a straight flight from Ghana to the United Kingdom, you have to go for British Airway. It's a seven hours, 30 minutes journey. So Big Baby wanted me to travel with British Airway because that was my first time traveling and he didn't want me to get stranded with transit and layovers and all that. But he wanted me to travel on the 7th February and we didn't get the british airway so we wanted an airline that wouldn't also keep or uh, take time with layover and transiting so we saw royal air maruk which was a nine 30 minutes journey so he was like oh british airline is seven hours 30 minutes and Royal Air Maroc is 9 hours 30 minutes so why don't we go for the Royal Air Maroc if we didn't get the British airline that's how come we booked for Royal Air Maroc so after booking for Royal Air Maroc I was like let me just go and research about this airline okay. I got the shock of my life. I cried that day because people were complaining. Royal and Maruk who misplace your bag. Royal and Maruk, they are racist. They are this. Ah! Guys, I was scared. I was like, oh, what did I do? I started crying. Go. I was like, baby, can we just get a refund of the money? I don't even want to travel on that day again. I don't want it. So it was like, Ella every airline is like that okay you just have to pray you can't tell me it is a british airline hasn't misplaced somebody's luggage before or air france and all those big 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 airlines they all misplace luggage so you just have to pray you come here you get here peacefully and successfully so it's like whether they misplace my luggage or not, all I want is to get to the United Kingdom. I just want to jack back. That is it. And I know the living God that I serve wouldn't make me carry all that food stuff and my luggage will go missing. No. <laughs> I was like, you, I'll come British Airway. It doesn't matter. This is just my first time traveling and I'm going to travel more if God wants that. And so after that, I just 
went for my graduation i did my graduation graduated and came home i told my friend erasy about my traveling and we started with the packing and all that so i was still going to work and i go to work around 6 30 a.m in the morning and i close around 5 p.m so i wasn't getting time to do my packing and all that so my friend big ups to you erasy I love you guys please help me say thank you to this my friend she's so selfless she's so sweet guys i love her i love her you see thank you okay i really appreciate that god bless you for everything you do for me so my friend was also helping me out in my parking and my big sister the love of my life she was also helping me out everybody all my family everyone after parking going to makola wherever beginning on everything that i see um i traveled on the 7th of february 2024 so guys if you haven't watched my uh, relocation vlog my travel preparation my apartment tour vlog everything please just go and watch it okay thank you and don't forget to leave a comment and a thumbs up there for me so i traveled on the 7th of february 2024 royal and maruk you have to leave your house very early because <clears throat> sorry because um, the plane moved around 4 a.m so i left the house around 12 30 a.m. Ahumachi, early in the morning, at dawn, we left the house to the airport and I did my check in and all that. Guys, please, you have to take 50 Ghana CDs along with you to pay for agriculture. Can you imagine? So, when you're sending food stuff like beans, rice, uh, yam, plantain, cocoa yam, palm oil, all those local food stuff, right? If you are taking some along with you or if you're traveling with all these things, you have to pay for agriculture, which was 50 Ghana cities at that time. But if you're not traveling with any food stuff, please don't go and pay because they can just look at your bag and tell you to pay for agriculture. They won't ask whether I have. Mm, I think the first person that I met, they didn't ask me if I have food. I was like, you have to go and pay for agriculture. So when I got, I was like, what is agriculture? And he told me, do you have food stuff? Do you have beans, rice, palm oil, whatever? And I was like, oh yeah. And he was like, you have to pay how much? Fifty cents. I was like, okay, cool. So guys, I want to state this one. When you get there, the people who come, you see, when you get to the airport, you have to leave your family behind and enter there a lot to go and weigh your luggages and everything before you come back. So when you are weighing your luggages and you are stranded, before they will allow you to bring one parent or friend or family inside to help you. So guys, I went inside there alone and met these two guys who offered to help me. I went to pay for my agriculture. We came down to weigh my luggages before going to the airline. You see, when you get there, you can do pre-weighing before you go and meet uh, the airline attendant to weigh your things for you. Do you get? So that pre-weighing, you can do it yourself. Please, if anyone comes to help, tell them you don't have money. You can do it yourself. If you have money, fine, because they really helped me to be honest with you even though they wanted to collect this big amount of money at that like that few seconds that they helped me they wanted to take a very huge amount of money for me for helping me to weigh my thing i didn't even call you to help me but they are going to help you that one yeah they will help you so guys when you get there and you don't have money tell them not to come close to your things you can do everything and please you have to Pay attention to your bags and all that, please. So these people came to take my bags, went to pay for agriculture. They helped me to do my pre-weighing. I did the weighing before coming to the airport. I wasn't having this weighing scale. Get this weighing scale. I think it is 
200 cd 300 cd somewhere when i got here i saw some i later saw some online so we have to uh, get some or go to makola and get some i forgot to get some so i went to tema uh, post office to weigh my things yeah so i went to pay and they helped me weigh in my things so when i got to the airport i realized my things i didn't arrange it well so i think it was over weighing a little bit and they gave me um that idea to go to the washroom to double up what i'm wearing so i took some of my dresses to go to the washroom to double up guys hmm go back and watch my relocation my ass became big <laughs> so um, i was wearing extra clothes that is it after that, i came back to weigh my things and it was perfect so uh, i went to the airline attendant for them to weigh my things finally finally when you finish weighing that your 224 kg bags will go to them you will never see it again so you reach your final destination so the only bag you're going to take along with you is your hand luggage yeah the only bag you're going to see is your hand luggage please before you get to the airport that the thing that you want to send you see that trouser wear everything you can wear five trousers nobody will look at you at the airport so everybody is busy going they want to get to their destination they don't even care about you wear it 10. the winter jacket please Ghana is hot, okay. So just put it on your hands. When you're transiting and you get to the other country that is a little bit cold, you can put it on. Or when you get into the plane, the plane is a bit cold, yes. Please don't wear it from your home because <laughs> the heat that will catch you before you get to the airport. <laughs> After doing my pre weighing and the final weigh, I went back to the entrance to meet my parents. And later I called my mom in to help me with the weighing and all that. So after we went back, I spent my last few moments with my parents. It was tragic comedy. I was happy that I was leaving. They were making me laugh, have fun, and I was also sad that I'm going to leave my family. I don't know when I'm going to see them again. I was very sad. I left. I left there around 3:30 to go meet immigration the ghana immigration they will just take your bag you will pass through some machine to see if you have any other thing you shouldn't travel with so guys your hand luggage you have to get between 10 to 11 kg with the airline that i used yes some airline should be 8 kg 7 kg so guys please do help to pack clothes don't put any pomade, food, water, oil, no, hair. Don't even put hair in your hand luggage. Just put uh, clothes, yes. Maybe your undies, your nightwears, your clothes. Don't put any food or anything. Hair, hair pomade, relaxers, no. Don't put anything. So you can do shoes or clothes, okay? Don't put anything food in your hand luggage because when you're passing through the immigration and um, it passes through the machine and it detects anything, food or something, they will take it down, okay? Yes, so please do have to pack all the clothes. But your other two 24kg bags, you can pack any food stuff you want. You can pack any dress, uh, any whatever, relaxer, wigs, whatever there, okay? so the ghana immigration was a bit smooth very smooth because someone told me when she got there they demanded for uh, 50 pounds or something and they didn't ask me for any money nothing they were like are you traveling i was like yeah where to the united kingdom where am my rook right yeah to do what i said let's go and spend time with my baby with my man <laughs> and they were like are you kidding me is that the only thing you're going to do i said of course <laughs> and uh, oh you are very very funny and nice oh nice meeting you have fun when i come to the united kingdom i'll come and look for you i was like okay okay i'll be hosting you in my house okay they were really friendly to me and i left to the waiting room to the waiting room i just went to the washroom to use the washroom i don't want any situation but i was sitting in the plane and i want to wee wee 
so i just came back did a little videos and pictures and all them so within 15 to 20 minutes they announced that we should get ready we are about leaving so we just entered the plane and boom to morocco so we got to morocco that was where i did my layover i waited for extra two hours please if you are going to morocco check your time because they are one hour ahead of ghana we we're supposed to get to morocco around 9 a.m the woman sitting beside me was going to italy so she was like her mom to me she was advising god in that plane eh, i met people that are my aunties grandmothers and they were just advising me and, oh god they, but they were really really sweet so i met this woman and well and i was like ah are we lost and she said no we are in morocco i said like, how my time is 8 a.m and we are supposed to get here at 9 a.m and she said oh so your time hasn't changed no morocco is one ahead of ghana so we are in morocco it's like god so i was i was checking everybody's time and everybody's time was 9 p.m me alone dear <laughs> my time was still 8 a.m are you kidding me so if i didn't check that time and act you have to act so if you're traveling alone and you've not traveled before don't go and do me ferry i'm trying i'm sorry please ask because my time wasn't changing at that time and we were supposed to leave morocco at 12 am i correct with the time yeah i think 12 in t anchor maybe i'll sit there until 12 by the time i will get there and it is already one and the flight is gone so please ask questions ask anyone around you any good person around you so we go to morocco um just go and watch my travel vlog okay you will see more for yourself we left morocco to the united kingdom and we took about three hours i think it was a three hour or two hours journey i don't remember i just watched my travel vlog okay we got to the uk now you are coming to meet the real deals do you know you can go back from there you can go back home from there they can tell you you are not allowed to come go, go back <laughs> i'm just kidding you're not scaring you okay i'm just kidding so we got to uk now it's time to meet immigration i wasn't scared because why should i be scared what have i done all my documents are legit my passport is perfect everything is okay so why should i why should i be scared so it goes to immigration i went there and they were like hello beautiful the first day they were like, hello beautiful I was like, hello sir said your name and i mentioned my name uh your age what are you coming to do i told them blah 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 blah, blah, blah. oh why are you from i'm from ghana ghana <laughs> You know, Ghana for Yajidi, Yajidi. <laughs> they were like, Ghana? I said, of course, sir. Oh, wow. Are you going to take me to Ghana? I said, why not? Anytime you're ready, just call me. I'll take you to Ghana. And I was like, go, go, just leave, just leave. Don't waste time. Everything about my relocation was God. God. Everything was easy. The people that I thought were going to be difficult were being so nice, super nice to me. So I just went to pick my bags. Thankfully, I met my bag. Everything was set perfect. In terms of entertainment, maybe they are poor because you wouldn't really entertain yourself. But they are not racist. They are nice people. Their food is nice, but some is not really, really nice. But it's okay i'm new to their food so maybe it wouldn't sound nice to me but it would taste nice to others and they were nice and they respect their time guys if you don't come with british airline please i will urge you to come with royal and maro if you want please they respect their time and my bags were intact thankfully maybe somebody's bag got missing but i got everything and i got here i met big baby we came home now let's talk about post relocation life after i got to the united kingdom it has been better sweet yeah better sweet sometimes you are sad and sometimes you are super super happy i'm not sad that i want to go back to ghana 
it's normal even if you are in ghana sometimes you get sad about things and sometimes you are happy yes life in the uk has been better sweet but has been more sweet look i am so happy to be here um everyone and their um, stories about relocation but mine i'm talking about myself my has been good extremely good look god is proving that he is alive my prayers are answered i am so happy to be here to be honest when i got here i went for my brp card brp is your biometric residence permit so guys after the whole talk interaction i will show you all the identification card from my brp my passport how the police statements look and all that i'll show you at the end of this vlog yeah so when i got here i went for my brp card i was given 10 days to go pick up my brp card after the 10 days they will take it away and now you have to go through a long process in getting it so please when you get here just look for the nearby post office around your location your area and go for your brp card and they'll post it to where you live that is why they will seek for your address where you live in the uk when you get here i spoke about that after my brp I did a registration for my GP. So GP is a small clinic around your area. Over here in the United Kingdom, when you are sick, you don't just get up and go to the hospital. No, you have to register your GP when you get here. So when you have feeling symptoms of something or sickness, you just have to book an appointment with your GP and go to your GP. When your case or your sickness get serious before they will send you to the hospital. That's how it is here. You don't just go to the hospital and tell them, I'm sick, my head is aching, my tummy is aching, I want medicine. No, 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 no. You have to go to your GP first. So that there are doctors, nurses, every person you see in the hospital in the GP as well. They will take care of you. So please, when you get here, register for your GP. You can go on Google Maps, search GP near me they will show you the way then you go register okay please guys and after that i applied for my ni so ni is like a national identification card so you just have to apply you can go to google and search how to apply for ni you see the steps you see a link that you can just tap on it and apply it will take a number of days for them to deliver it to you so you add your postal code and your location where you live and all that they will deliver it to you and after that i opened my bank account so you can open monzo monzo is like an online banking so you just have to go through that process on how to open an account with monzo and they will also send you your monzo card for payments and all that so they will deliver it to you then you have it so these are the most important document or identification cards you need when you get to the uk now let's go to standard of living hmm. rents rents in the uk is very expensive i'm not going to lie it is very 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 expensive but guys worry not you work and you get paid so you can rent okay don't worry don't be scared it's not that scary the documents you need before you rent you need your passport you need your national identification card that is the ni card that i spoke about you need your immigration status also employment status yeah i think you have to be employed for at least three months before you rent in some cases yeah so you have to provide like your three month pay slip to your landlord when applying so in my case 
i just came to meet our apartment here because big baby was already living in the uk so he was in our apartment before i got here so i don't have any idea about how to rent and all that big baby takes care of that so i have no idea about that but you can search guys or you can watch other informative videos on youtube on how to get a rent in the uk i think someone asked me about how much i pay for the apartment we pay 800 pounds monthly without energy or utility bills so if you add our energy and utility bills it's some up to thousand pounds monthly yeah when you relocate to the united kingdom or you're finding a city to relocate when you're coming to the uk please avoid london you see that london <laughs> please avoid london because to rent in london is crazy it is so expensive london is a tourist place people travel from their countries to come have fun in london london is fun if you are going to spend money please if you have money you can stay but you can find beautiful cities around london and stay like here isbon isbon is a very beautiful city isbon to london is one hour so you can have time and go to london when you want to have fun okay and summer is eastbourne and brighton people also travel from london manchester all those big 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 places come to eastbourne and brighton to enjoy summer because we are in the coastal area and you know how these white people take their entertainment and enjoyment seriously they love going to the beach and all that so during summer they all come to eastbourne to have fun if you are coming here and you don't have anybody to live with like you're coming to start your life all together and save please avoid london because you're going to cry rent in london is very expensive so let's go to utilities utilities include water electricity heating oil internet and cable services like uh, sky or bt sports and all those things you pay for all those things in this house we pay for electricity that's our utilities water internet and that yes it's quite expensive electricity is very expensive so you guys should mind how you use electricity when you get to the uk also transportation in the uk so when it comes to transportation in the uk you have bus you have train you have taxi you have uber everything everything a little advice from me to you please use buses and train when you get to the uk taxis are expensive not really 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 expensive but let's say you're a newcomer you come to start life you are living alone please try and use buses okay you can do weekly purchase monthly daily they are quite affordable so you can use buses and train and also the currency the uk currency the currency over here is pound sterling and we have pence and pounds so the pence are the coins yeah, in ghana we say peswa coins okay and the pounds are the notes okay so a pound is equal to 17 ghana cities 39 pesos money we get nickname pound sterling <laughs> 17 ghana cities 39 pesos oh my goodness Hey, but one pound in Nara can build a house in Nigeria. I'm kidding. I know when you're changing pounds into Nara, it's quite high. It's very high. Yeah, that's why someday I'll build my house in Nigeria. <laughs> it's better when you're sending money from here to home. It's better because it will increase. So shops. Let's talk about shops in the UK. When you get here, you meet shops like Primark, H&M, River Island, Boots, Quiz, M&S, Zara. As a newcomer, please, I'm begging you, stick to Primark. Primark, they have nice things. They have nice things. But just that the quality can't be like 
zara quiz them you get but they are quite affordable so when you get here as new as you are just stick to primark uh when you start working after three months or you can raise money to be buying stuff from zara oh of course yes so for the first time in, you just have to limit your budget on items okay after a while you can get all these things and we have online shops like shein fashion nova jd plt that's really lot of things zara and all that so you can stay in your comfort zone other online they will bring you to you in your house there is no scam zone around here please they will bring it to you okay and also we have food shops we have asda Tesco, Poundland, Audi, and Saver. So when it comes to food and um, detergents and um, few things to use in the house, you can go to these shops. But please, as a newcomer that you want to save money, you have to check shops like Asda, Poundland, Audi, and Savers. Their things are very, very, very affordable as compared to tesco and all those big 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 shops the reason why i go to tesco every time to shop is because tesco is close to our house and we hardly get time to go to these shops we go there monthly the asda and all those pound lines so when we want to buy a few things to keep in the house we just go to tesco it's expensive but what can we do one more so just check um poundland um as that audi save us to get a few things okay when you get here let's talk about work so work is very important if you are relocated to the united kingdom as a student a dependent permanent whatever you, you have to work you can't come here and tell me you're going to school, you won't work. It's a joke. All jokes on you, right? You have to work. When you get here, you have to work because UK is very expensive. I'm not going to lie. UK, UK is a very expensive country. But then, a beautiful country. What can we do? When you work, they will pay you correct money. So, even if it's expensive, they're paying you well. So, work when you get here and you're looking for jobs you have to check online there are some apps you can download to find jobs i'm going to mention a few so we have indeed total jobs hr go cv library and many more yeah you can just download them or you can go to google safari to check them out and you just upload your cv over there so when they find any job they will send you a notification then you apply do you get so you have to build a strong cv please you have to build a strong cv add where you worked your education whatever volunteer jobs you do things you did for your society way back attachment internship add everything and do it nicely you have to add your location where you live your name everything build a great cv and you have to get good references in your cv so references are the people they can rely or get information about you from do you get it? so it could be your head of department way back in school it could be your boss in your formal job or your previous job before relocating to the united kingdom and we have character references it could be your sister your friends your colleagues and all that so you just have to write their names their postal address their emails numbers and a little information about them about your references please look for good people who reply emails faster you keep people really care about references when you're looking for a job and they want to give you the job they will just refer they will just email them to seek information about you so you have to look for good people to do that for you and people who are always replying emails and you have to 
apply online too that's what i said the indeed the total jobs the hr go the cv library and all that sometimes you can apply about 20 30 jobs and they are not really giving it to you they're not even looking at whatever that you apply they're not paying attention to you in my case when i got to the united kingdom big baby wanted me to stay in the house for like a month to rest to know the system very well before i start working so we're using that opportunity to just apply for jobs and i was using that opportunity to edit my youtube that's when i started doing youtube and all that i wanted to use youtube as my side hustle so guys after a month i was like no i want to work then i came to realize all these jobs that i've applied for they're not really paying attention to me I got a job they called me for an interview i went and they were like wow do you have experience in a job i was like no this is my first time and i've been here for almost two months i don't have any experience and they were like we are going to give you the job but now we need few documentations from you and you have to come along with a document on so so and so date i came home i was so happy i packed all my documents and i went guys I got there, I rang the bell, one staff came and was like, oh, the manager is busy, she's in a meeting, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, can you take the document because she asked for it? And they're like, no, let's ask her first. And she went back in to speak to the manager. She came back and she was like, no, the manager says she's busy, she can't see you now. I was like, wow. So just keep my document i'll come back later and they said no this is a personal document we can't take it so i was like okay that's fine yeah it makes sense to go so let me go home i came to the house i went back again the next day they told me the manager isn't here she has been busy so when i got home the manager called me and she was like ella you can't come here without an appointment please wait we'll call you we'll talk to you later i was like okay don't worry i have all the time in the world i'll wait guys that's when i waited and waited and waited i didn't hear from her i sent her an email messages whatever she would she didn't mind me so after three weeks i called her and she was like oh she forgot she's going to send me an email right away look if you want to give me the job you can just go straight to the point and tell me bring your documents let's start your, your process or whatever if you won't give me the job just tell me but she lied to me she's going to send me an email i waited the whole day no email so when big baby came home i told him about it and was like Ella, don't worry i'm not even force you to get a job just relax you get it this is how it is you don't have any experience about any job in the uk so this is how they are going to do listen once you get a job you see all these people that rejected you they will start calling you to come back he kept encouraging me so one day he was like you know what let's just go and look for the job ourselves let's stop applying online so we started going around when god is preparing something big for you he takes his time i know people relocate to the uk and six months three months a month years they don't have a job please my loved sister and brother please take your time okay and pray to god god knows what he is doing you just have to take your time okay this is an advice a free advice from a little sister to you all god is good so one time i went to big baby's workplace and he was like oh let's just continue with this journey and look for a job so we went to Paulgate. Paulgate is a town after eastbourne it's 30 minutes by bars and seven minutes by train so we got there we saw this job we went there and they were like oh no they don't need new staff we went to another job close to it and they were like the manager is not around can you just apply online and i was saying it in my head so online never again <laughs> i would do it but i'm not saying online job application is bad people apply and they get okay 
I even applied for an online job. I got it, but they were like, I don't have any experience. So imagine I had an experience they would have picked me yet so all these online apps they are good but if they are not saying anything or minding you just use your toes and your energy go there by yourself sometimes your speech your character might catch their attention and they would want to employ you whether you have experience or not so we're about going me i was bored i was like hey, me i'm not doing this i'm going to sleep when we're leaving we saw one job another job close to this particular job and i was like baby let's just go and check this place and i was like yes i was about seeing it let's go we got there we rang the bell they came hello hi looking for a job i was like are they kidding me how did they know we are looking for jobs uh and babe was like oh yeah i'm not looking for jobs but she's looking for a job come in come in come in we just when there, we sat down, they were like, what do you guys want to have? Do you want tea? Do you want coffee? Some snacks? We have different types of snacks here. I was like, wow. Now, so, you don't do for here? <laughs> so, we sat down and babe was like, oh, we are, I was like, oh, mom, we are not okay. Oh. We are not okay. We want it. Free food. <laughs> You can't just tell a Ghanaian girl that there is free food and you are expecting to say no. Oh, we want it. They were like, tea or coffee. I was like, coffee, why? I love their coffee. I want that one. So they brought the application forms. They asked me a few questions. I was like, oh, okay. We'll call you, okay? I was like, please, if you won't give me the job, don't tell me you'll call me. So oh, come down, we'll call you. So I came and they had to do my DBS for the job. So with that kind of job, they needed my DBS. DBS is like, it's more like a police statement. So in Ghana, we we'll say police statement. That's how DBS is. So I think they will send your documents and few things about you to the British police for them to investigate if you have committed any crime ever since you got to the United Kingdom. Yep. So I was there, they called me to come for my DBS, bring my documents. So they mentioned a few documents. When you're going to apply for DBS, you need your NI, National Identification Card, your BRP card. And you have to get your Ghana address, your name, and few things. So I just went and we applied for my DBS. After some few weeks, I was still waiting on them. I didn't want to call them and pressure them. I was just waiting. And at that point, I was getting emails from the previous jobs I applied, wanting to have interviews with me. So Big Baby was like, do you know you've gotten the other job? Because all these job opportunities that you're getting now, she tell you that job you've gotten is so worried. This is what call can do if you take your time and if you pray hard i was just there one day cooking i think yeah i saw this uk number because i was like oh i answered and hello am i speaking to miss emmanuela and uh i said yes please um i just want to tell you that you should check your mailbox we've sent you a letter it contains your dbs you passed and you have the job now so can you start working tomorrow i was like i can start working today i need this job and my boss was like oh no, no calm down don't worry just start tomorrow if you can i was like i can so i'm going to be available tomorrow and next tomorrow i was like yes boss i am there in fact i am in front of I'm in front of the gate. No, 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 no. She was like, okay. So I went. It was fun. To be honest, I got one of the good jobs. I know there are good days and bad days. But guys, I am happy to be where I am. I am so, so, so happy. That's how come I got a job. And since then, hmm. Small time that I'll go through my email. 
you will see job upon job okay we want to book you for an interview are you ready for an interview i see this number calling me hello am i speaking to Macy manuel and i will have this job oh god and i'll be like oh I'm okay thank you very much so guys the jobs will start coming after you've gotten one okay uh, so that's my story so guys you just have to take your time and find time to go to these mini coffee shops restaurants care homes warehouses go there personally and tell them you need a job have your cv like have a great cv be ready be confident that's all and some of the documents you should take along with you should be your ni your dbs your passport your brp card your cv any certificate like any certificate you have from ghana or from wherever you came from attachment internship any certificate you've worked hard for please take it along with you and your right to work code you can just go online or apply for your right to work code they will give you a code so you give that information to your boss when you get there let's talk about spiritual life guys this uk will show you shake that you forget you're a christian and you even be getting time to go to work please in as much as we need this money i'm trying so hard to work hard to get the money to get the pounds to pay bills and all that please don't forget god the god who brought you here okay i am a christian so i'm talking to all christians here if you're a muslim you are a buddhist whatever religion that you belong to please don't forget to do what you used to do when you were back home please this is what i do sometimes i have shift on sundays so i make sure that when i get any free sunday i don't miss church i go to church and one thing about UK church, they don't waste time. Look, 45 minutes, one hour, you are done with service. Please don't miss church when you have free Sundays. And I have this online prayers. I join Alpha Hour. Big ups to any Afarian watching me now. Every day with God is every day in victory. So I join Alpha Hour every night when i don't go for night shift and um, i join during the day when i miss the previous night episodes yeah i repeat it and replay it during the day when i come back from work you can also join us why not alpha is a very powerful online platform for prayers you can also go on pinterest and search for weekly bible quotations that you have to stick to so you just have to read every day you can just search for weekly bible quotations so they will list the days and the quotations you should be reading every day it's quite interesting so you can get that from pinterest pinterest is an app yeah it's a very beautiful app for all the girlies if you're a girl and you don't have pinterest on your phone please you're a man you're a man <laughs> i'm just kidding you should get a pinterest on your phone it's a very sweet app for all the girlies and the ladies yeah so that is my spiritual life and someone asked me how i manage my whole world youtube because i still make videos every day the last time i came and i was like i'm now a workaholic i'm always busy at work yes i make videos for you all and i still go by my routine like go out have fun with big baby i clean my house i still cook and do all that so guys for this how i go by it first of all i involve god in everything i do before I start every day, every week, every month, every year, I pray to God to lead me because I can't do it with my strength. So I go to work four days in a week yeah, and I have three days off. I use a day to clean my entire house. I have OCD and I can't stay a week without cleaning my house. Never. 
I'll be able to stay peacefully. Oh, it won't turn me down until I clean. That's me. So I use a particular day to clean, and I use another off day to shop. We used to shop monthly. Now we shop every two weeks. So the next off day, that's the last one. I use it to cook. I use it to cook all my meals. So I cook jollof rice, fried rice, light soup. Yeah, I cook and I keep them. That is how I manage my home. And also. I don't joke with my work when it comes to work when i have to go to work i go to work early i make sure i don't miss my bosses i make sure i do what i'm supposed to do when i get to work i do everything because i know god gave me that work and i don't want to risk it and my spiritual life as i said i joined alpha Oa. alpha Oa is so good i don't stop saying it like it's a very good 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 prayer platform and youtube so you know my off days it could be the cleaning of day cooking of day shopping of days i use them to create content and add it so um, when we finish shopping and blah 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 at night when i'm coming to sleep i'll start editing small 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 so within the week i edit more like an hour two hours to edit so by the end of the week i have a full vlog for you guys that's how i do it i just pray to god to strengthen me give me ideas about content i should be bringing out guys let me show you this document and identification card i was talking about this is the monzo card i spoke about this how it looks like so when you open an account with them they will give you this card yeah they will post this card for you to get it and let's move to my brp card this is how brp card looks like oh guys i don't want my information to be out there that is why forgive me but you can go online and search for how brp card looks like you get it this is my police statement this is it this is how police statement looks like this ghana police statement my passport Yay! There's a security check. They are this check day when I got to the UK. This is how the passport looks like. So the front page is your picture and a little information about you. And this is my visa. Should I show you guys? So this is how it looks like. My face looks horrible. So that's the passport and the DBS for the job. So this is what the police will be checking for. Yep. And police records of conviction, caution, reprimands, and warnings. None recorded. I haven't had any warnings from the police or whatever. And information from the list held under section 124 of education act 2022 not requested dbs children's barred list information not requested dbs adults barred list information non recorded other relevant information disclosed at the chief police officer's discretion non-recorded yeah so this is a certificate for me i am a good girl no crimes no crimes <laughs> i didn't commit any crime in ghana i should come here and commit crime no way we just pray for god's strength so we don't land ourselves into any trouble yeah i know god's protection is on us nothing is going to happen so guys this brings us to the end of this vlog please i wanted to speak about the things brought along with me from ghana to the uk if you want me to do a full detailed vlog about it just comment yes in the comment section so guys this whole process has been gold i'm not an agent i'm nobody Everything that I brought out here today is from my own experience. I was speaking about my relocation story. I don't know what people are going through. I don't know how DS was, but to me, this is how life has been ever since I came and how 
it started when i was relocating so everything that i said here is about me and nobody if you find this video useful and informative please give my video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't and don't forget to hit the notification bell after subscribing punch the notification bell punch it so you don't miss out a video thank you guys so much for your support your comments your likes your shares i love you guys don't forget to do same to this video kindly share my video like it comment tell a friend to tell a friend see you guys in another vlog i love you guys so much